This 4090 says it needs 1200 watts, 1200 watts. This is the recommendation for the RTX 4090 GameRock OC. But honestly, guys, I don't think you need a 1200 watt power supply to run an RTX 4090. I'm actually in this problem myself right now. I want to buy an RTX 4090 for the channel for reviews. My current uh, editing slash benchmarking rig, because I really just have my one main PC, <laughs> um, has an 850 watt power supply. And I'm curious, do I need to upgrade? And if I do want to upgrade, oh man, I'd really like to wait until there's those new PCIe 5 native power supplies that are on the horizon. But as far as I can tell, you can't really buy one right now in time for the RTX 4090 launch. So are people like me who have an 850 watt power supply still going to be okay? Well, there's different power supply recommendations for the different cards. If we hop over to NVIDIA's page for their, um, for their Founders Edition, and you check your system compatibility, they actually have a really clearly stated um, page here that says check your power supply, and you need an 850 watt power supply. Now there's some more details here, so let's get into that. Um, but it's saying a higher power rating may be required depending on your system configuration. And so this, is one of the big deals. First of all, not every 850 watt power supply is created equal. And one of the issues isn't just the average power consumption of the, of the GPU and your whole system, but also the transient peaks. We saw some issues with the 3000 series, especially on lower quality power supplies, uh, tripping the overcurrent protection and shutting down PCs, that being an, a problem. And I, so I think the quality of your 850 watt power supply could factor in here. But also you do need certain number of PCIe connections because there's this issue of, uh, I think I've got a picture of one here on this article uh, of this thing. So the card itself is gonna have one of the new PCIe Gen 5 connectors, but there's an adapter that then splits off into these. And I've seen a lot of, uh, you know, talk about those those adapters only being able to plug and unplug 30 times, guys, those ratings are kind of meaningless. First of all, you're, you're not gonna need to unplug your, your GPU 30 times for, the, for anything like a normal uh, PC user's lifespan with their GPU. Uh, but not only that, that those ratings are like worst case scenario ratings when, the, when the, you know, you're putting a huge bend on it at high temperatures with maximum voltage and unplugging it hard and unplugging it. In other words, I don't think that's gonna be that big of a deal. Now, it does matter, I think, what kind of connectors you're actually leading into those with uh, to see if you're, you're gonna run into any problems. So um, they're saying here that, that one option is obviously the new PCIe Gen 5 a power cable from your power supply. But like I said, those power supplies that do that natively aren't really available yet. You're gonna need to wait a few months and maybe just wait a few months to buy your 4090, guys, and maybe the price will come down, maybe we'll see some good AMD competition. But if you're gonna buy one on launch day, um, make sure you have at least three PCIe 8-pin power cables from the power supply uh, to the included RTX 4090 power connector adapter. Now this is where I need to double check on my power supply to see, uh, see if I'm okay, because currently I have two of these coming out of my power supply that then each branch out into two more connections. But there's only, these are all, you know, the cables are only rated for a certain amount of wattage, right? And I think the issue that we've seen is if that's not divided evenly uh, into the cables coming out, <laughs> you know, coming out, all right, so if you have two coming out and then splitting off into four, if, if that could end up throwing too much power into one of those cables. And like I said, I can't test this out myself right now. I don't have a 4090, I'm not getting sent a, a, a review sample. But anyway, additionally, you gotta wanna make sure this thing fits in your case. Did you guys watch the, uh, wait, where's the picture? The Jay's Two Cents video where he unboxes the 4090 Strix because it can't fit in a pretty normal size case. This case could fit the Strix 3090, and I think even the 3090 Ti, but it does not fit the Strix 4090. And I'll talk more about why I think these are so overbuilt, because I don't think this is necessary at all. It is what it is, but I don't think that's necessary at all. But anyway, you do wanna make sure it's gonna fit. The Founders Edition card, 
looks like it needs 12 inches and then 5.4 inches with another 1.4 inches of clearance going to the uh, the edge of the case and a three slots uh, three slots free here and again for a good airflow you would want some extra space past that three slot design. Now again, this is for the Founders Edition cooler, but a lot of the board partner cards are completely overbuilt past this point and also are going to list different power supply recommendations. Rather than go, go to all of the different, um, uh, different pages separately, I did find this Tom's Hardware article, and by the way, all my sources will be linked in the description of the video as usual. Uh, where we see some of the listings that are available so far. So for example, this ridiculous monster is <laughs> the, the graphics card, not Jay. Anyway, sorry, uh, <laughs> is recommending the um, uh, 1000 watts, okay? But what did I start with at the beginning of the video today? I started with the pallet model, which is recommending 1200 watts. But a lot of even the AIB partners are either recommending 1000 watts or the 850 watts uh, that the Founders Edition uh, recommends. So what's going on with all of that? Well, what's going on is that the amount of power supply you need isn't entirely based on the GPU. If you're buying a 4090, odds are that the GPU is gonna be the highest power drawing component in your PC, but your CPU is probably the second most powerful. And CPUs can draw a wide variety of wattages, even for good gaming CPUs. If you're using something like a Ryzen 5600X, which is a very good gaming CPU, and if you're buying the 4090 for 4K gaming, uh, you do tend to be more GPU limited. I mean, I'll be interested to see what happens with the 4090 performance. But again, the kind of frame rates that a 5600X is able to put out for gaming at 4K at max settings are probably going to be a, a reasonable pairing. Like I said, we'll need to explore that. But the point is that 5600X is what? A 65 watt uh, PSU. So even if your 4090 was going way past the 450 watts it's rated for, up to like 500 watts, 550 watts, 600 watts, if you only have a 65 watt C CPU and then a bit of RAM in your system and a few fans, you're fine. You're fine, right? But where these are coming from, for example, Asus is saying for its ROG Strix model, the company is recommending the 1000 watt P PSU, but it, it notes that it assumes users will be overclocking both the CPU and GPU. And not only that, they're assuming that somebody buying a 4090 might be pairing it with something like a Intel 12900K and overclocking it. And we've seen that those overclocked can draw hundreds of watts, right? So in other words, if you're running an overclocked 12900K, and you're gonna buy the 4090, and it's gonna be an overclocked model, and maybe you'll manually overclock it past the factory overclock, then I don't think your 850 watt um, power supply uh, would be a good decision. It might work, but I don't think that's recommended. They're recommending 1000 watts for those kind of worst case scenario situations, and I think, uh, 1200 watts to me honestly sounds a bit ridiculous. And so that's where I'll bring up the other thing. Generally, the, po the power supply rec recommendations that come from the GPU manufacturer are overstated to cover themselves in warranty situations. They want to give a number that is big enough that you are unlikely to run into issues. Whereas in reality, a lot of people can be well under that number and still be perfectly fine. Now notice, like we said, Nvidia themselves is saying 850 watts is fine for their Founders Edition, but a higher power rating may be required depending on your system configuration, right? So that's where it comes in. Do you have enough uh, PCIe connectors coming out of your power supply? Is it not only 850 watts, but also of high quality? And then, is it also, you know, uh, what what is the rest of your system? Because if you're running like a, a, a reasonable Ryzen system or something like that, you're probably fine. Something like a 5800X3D, I think is only drawing a little over 100 watts. Whereas, like I said, 12900KS will be drawing hundreds, especially if overclocked, and then I think you will need something more. Now, last thing I wanna talk about is why are some of these so overbuilt? I read a really interesting article um, from Igor's lab lab, where he's saying that the board partners were told that they would need to be targeting a 600 watt GPU when they made their, their designs. 
because at the time, because these things need to be developed months and months and months and months in advance. You can't change them at the last minute, right? So at the time, I guess NVIDIA was still considering the fact that they might need to go with Samsung to produce the actual chip. But they ended up going with TM TSMC on a much more efficient process node. And if they had gone with Samsung, they had thought that they might need to target 600 watts to hit their performance targets, but they ended up going with the TSMC node and um, really being able to rein the power back way back to that 450 watt target to hit that, that performance target, right? But the, the, um, the board partners had already been working on their designs, and so they've ended up with massive coolers that are designed to be able to handle a 600 watt GPU, which is why we end up with something like this, Whereas in reality, their 3090 Ti coolers probably would have been fine to stick with. And that's why I think we're getting these ridiculously overbuilt and oversized coolers. Now, the good news is that will help keep you cool. Um, the bad news is um, I think you're definitely gonna need to support the thing or it'll break your motherboard, you know? Um, so make sure you get the proper support in there. Um, but not only that, I think it's actually bad for the, um, be, for the board partners, because it meant they had to spend more money on these coolers than they actually really needed to. So <laughs> anyway, they're probably not happy with NVIDIA about that. Now, in general, I think that uh, if you're willing to consider maybe just not overclocking your 4090, it will also help rein in your... Um, It'll help rein in the kind of power supply that you're going to need because we're seeing some early leaked testing from 3D Mark of like an AIB model card, which has that factory overclock versus um, uh, one running at stock at the 450 watts. And there's not a massive performance difference. And in general, I've always been more interested in underclocking and, uh, you know, under, sorry, not underclocking, but undervolting rather than overclocking. Um, and I think that might be the way to go on these, at least in my opinion. Uh, this is from video. Videocards.com, they're saying that they have early benchmarks from 3D Mark synthetic testing, um, and they have both, uh, they have Fire Strike as well as Time Spy Extreme and Port Royal. This is actually pretty interesting. So it's looking like they're seeing um, a 4090 AIB card versus a 4090 running at stock, and the stock model is getting 98% of the performance uh, of the AIB model. And we're seeing um, that in the uh, 3D Mark Fire Strike Ultra, we're also seeing 97% uh, of the performance of the AIB model in the, um, what is this? This is the Time Spy Extreme. And then really interesting, we have some Port Royal results. Remember, Port Royal is a, uh, is a ray tracing benchmark. To be clear, Fire Strike Ultra is a 4K DX11 test. Time Spy Extreme is a 4K DX12 test, and Port Royal it, uh, involves ray tracing and DX12, and it's at 1440p. Anyway, we're seeing the 4090 stock getting 98% of the performance of the AIB model. Now, um, to summarize this compared with some other models here, this is pretty interesting. Uh, we're seeing that if you look at the 4090 versus the 3090 and the performance uplift that you're seeing, the Firestrike Ultra is a two times performance uplift, which is interesting. Times by Extreme is 1.84 to 1.89 uh, times the performance of the 3090. And Port Royal is a 1.82 to 1.86 uh, compared to the 3090. Now again, that's compared to the 3090, not the 3090 Ti, but all signs point to us seeing a 4090 Ti come out in the future. So if you are comparing the 4090 to the 3090 rather than the fastest uh, um, 3000 series GPU, those are some big performance gains. And I will also mention that I'm surprised actually that the ray tracing performance saw less of an uplift than we're seeing in the DX11 and DX12. Now this is just synthetic rather than um, uh, you know, rather than actual gaming workloads. But given a lot of what uh, NVIDIA's kind of marketing presentation for this, the 4090 seemed to be based on improving the ray tracing performance, I found this interesting. Although it is true, I think that a lot of their improved ray tracing performance did rely on optimizations that had to be done by the game developer and Port Royal would have obviously been developed before that was a thing. So it wouldn't feature that. So 
Anyway, interesting stuff. We'll see full reviews on October 11th, and I'm really hoping that we'll st we'll see uh, some uh, testing on lower end power supplies and seeing if we see some of those transient peak issues and things like that that we saw from uh, uh, from uh, previous generations. Anyway, I'm pretty tempted to stick with my 850 watt power supply as long as I can check if I have another uh, power cable to come out of my, my power supply because I don't want to run into an issue where I'm drawing too much current through one of those and like start a fire, melt a cable or something like that. Um, now, if I do buy another one, I think it'll be interesting to see if I'm able to see any performance difference if I test it on my 850 watt versus my you know new one if I get like a 1200 watt. Um, also, I wonder, I do have a 650 watt power supply. I wonder if you paired like a Ryzen 5600X or something like that, like a low, pretty low wattage CPU uh, with the really high end um, uh, graphics card, like if a lower wattage um, power supply would actually be able to handle that situation. I hope all of you have an excellent day.